suppose that our data consists of locations in the United States parameterized by latitude and longitude. The, and if you think about it, just roughly, you say, well, the natural clustering would divide the US into four groups, namely points in the mainland, in Alaska, maybe points in Hawaii, and points in Puerto Rico. On the other hand, if you think a little bit more closely about it, you realize this isn't quite right. Uh, the Aleutians in Alaska, for example, those islands might form clusters and some of the other offshore islands there. Hawaii consists of several islands, uh, you know, eight to be, uh, to be clear. So maybe one, one wants that cluster. Well, it depends. Do, would, do you want that one or do you want the higher level one? That's a question that is dependent on your use case or on what it is that you want to do with the clustering. Um, um, a second point is sometimes the question might be how important, how big, how or how concentrated are particular clusters. There, are, so there are other questions beyond resolution that come up. So the the previous thing that I showed you is a matter of resolution. Higher resolution would show you. Um, you know, smaller islands in Hawaii and Alaska, um, you know, high, uh, lower resolution would, would, would ignore those, those questions. But there are other questions beyond the resolution that come up for, for example, deciding what groupings are large enough or significant enough to include. So, for example, do we include, uh, you know, in this cluster in Bird Rock off the Northern California coast where we are here, um, you know, this island has no people on it. It's of no real significance, but, you know, at the very finest resolution level, it would show up as a cluster. Okay, but now, so we've taken this, this, this uh, you know, idealized example where we are studying points in the United States. But suppose that we don't, and, and, and measuring them by latitude, longitude. But suppose that we're interested in something other than latitude, longitude. So um, we might, for example, cluster by political preferences. And if that happens, as we've kind of seen, that this clustering would probably contain two clusters, one red and one blue. And this is, these are states that are characterized by the, their uh, political preferences. So that's two clusters. That's informative. But what might be more informative is to use latitude, longitude, as well as um, political preferences. And so what happens then is you get this kind of picture. Uh, you can see here that we're not now, we're not, we're not just going to cluster with two groups, but what we're going to get is we're going to get regions with political affinity uh, to, to each other. So uh, you can see here, we get Hawaii, we get uh, the West Coast, we get kind of the blue mountain states, and industrial upper Midwest and the upper East Coast. And that's informative. We, we kind of believe that uh, the politics in these places are not identical. So, you know, the blue states in the, in the upper Midwest might be quite different from Hawaii, even though they both show up as blue and they show up as being uh, localized differently. Now, and, and this is, now I want to talk about what's really relevant to the case study that we're going to show you here in a minute. Um, so, Oftentimes, we're interested in, in optimization or in finding things where places are uh, places where certain quantities are maximized or optimized. So, and and you know, if you think from the math side, if often when you're doing optimization, you find that there's more than one local max or min. And what that means is that we kind of want to understand the landscape, not just the absolute max or min. And local optima can be very important. So in, in this case, we're, we're going to show you a map of the U.S. again, this time with occurrences of uh, or death, occurrences of death from pancreatic cancer together with their placement, the local optima or hotspots. So here is the, the map, uh, the map of the U.S. And the states are colored by uh, death rate per 100,000 population from pancreatic cancer. And you can see there's a spread, but you can see there's several red groupings there on the um, on, on the, in the eastern part of the country. So you can see there's Maine, Vermont, uh, there's Michigan, there's Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Mississippi. So there are different groups here. And it might very well be that the occurrence, say, in Michigan, maybe is much bigger than that in Mississippi. But nevertheless, we want to understand about Mississippi because Mississippi is elevated relative to the people, to the, to the, the areas around it. And so we really do want to understand this landscape. 
Um, so again, uh, there are probably different reasons for these various hotspots. For example, presence of heavy industry in Michigan might explain their high value, but there could be likely other explanations in Maine and Mississippi. When we wanna take actions, we need to know this kind of information. It's not enough to simply optimize and find you know, the highest point. We really want to understand the different areas, different parts of our data set, which are uh, where things are elevated, you know, or you know, exceedingly low. And so for us, what we're gonna be talking about uh, in, in, um, in, in our case study is exactly finding these kind of hotspots where models underperform, uh, where the, the Gen AI models underperform. So question is, what do we need to create this kind of clustering? We need some kind of a map, not an actual geographic map, but some kind of other map in the form of a graph analogous to that lat long map for the US. Um, and we use that map and produce heat maps and cluster it um, cluster based on that map instead of the map on the US. So this is what we do at Blue Light AI for all kinds of data. We produce an appropriate map, even for unstructured data, and allow you to construct these heat maps and clusterings. We call it navigable clustering in that the construction of the map can be varied in, in, in various ways, in, including resolution, but uh, you know others as well that produce better uh, maps from the point of view of creating um, uh, local maxima and minima, finding good, uh, you know, solid ones, and also from interpretability. So navigable clustering is part of the TDA topological data analysis, which uh, we developed uh, in, in the, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago and continuing, uh, you know, at Stanford and at other universities around the country. So now what I'll do, oh yeah, one, one other, one uh, important point about uh, producing these maps is that when you build clusterings, uh, it might very well be that, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's an interesting question to ask, given one group, what are the nearby things? What are the things that are similar? And that's something that ordinary clustering does not give you. Ordinary clustering simply divides things into groups. And here, uh, what we're doing is we're gonna divide you into groups, but we're gonna tell you what other groups are like it. And so for example, in a group uh, with, with a group label on the left there, which says, you know, food, and food wars and the UK, uh, we have three different groups that are nearby. One is involving burgers, taste, another is involving Asian food, another is involving Thanksgiving and, and breakfast. So, um, so this kind of gives you a conceptual idea of, of, of what your clusters are doing when they are actually, when there are clusters that are related to each other. And that also is really important for gaining insights and in particular producing explanations for clusters.